Hello, it's Eamon McCauley here, Ardoin Boxing Historian. Uh, what I'd like to talk about today is uh, dream fights, fantasy fights. Uh, 15 rounds, 15 fighters, 15 fantasy fights. Uh, Harry Greb and Jack Dempsey, two guys from the same era. And uh, Greb was one fighter Dempsey didn't want to box because he boxed everybody else. He boxed everybody that Greb beat. And the Harry Greb from 1918, 1919, 1920, when he had two good eyes, I believe would have been way too good for Jack Dempsey. It would have been too quick because Harry Greb was lightning quick. That was his main asset. He had a great chin. If Jack Dempsey couldn't have knocked out uh, Tommy Gibbons, then he wouldn't have knocked out Harry Greb. Greb would have outpointed him. Uh, Greb never stopped throwing punches. And Greb was only a middleweight, and Dempsey was a heavyweight. But their head to head record, Greb is much better. He beat guys much easier. The same guys, same opponents, common opponents. That what Dempsey boxed, Greb boxed him and beat him much easier. So I would have to go with Harry Greb in that one. Uh, round two, Henry Armstrong versus Aaron Pryor. Now, two guys, perpetual motion, two very fast guys, two very slick guys. But Aaron Pryor, who did he beat? Who did he box? An old uh, Peppermint Fraser, an old... Uh, Antonio Kid Pembley Cervantes, who took a title off, who dropped him. Uh, an old Alexis Arguello, who was stepping up to win his fourth world title at different weights. I mean, you know, it's quality of opposition here. Uh, these guys might have been legends, but they were well past their best when, when Pryor boxed them. So, you know, name me one great fighter uh, that Pryor beat in their prime. So, has to be Armstrong all the way. The quality of opposition there, Armstrong boxed. Uh, Armstrong would be in my top three greatest pound for pound boxers ever. So I would go with Henry Armstrong there uh, very strongly. Round three, Ray Robinson against Ray Leonard. The Ray Robinson from the welterweight uh, 120 something fights, we only won defeat, which he avenged against Jake Lamada five times. He would have to fancy against Ray Leonard. Uh, don't forget, Ray Leonard called himself Sugar Ray after uh, Ray Robinson. Uh, two great fighters, all these are all great fighters, and some of them it's very, very hard to pick a winner. Uh, but I'm not going to sit in the fence. I'm going to tell you the way I see it, and it has to be Robinson. Muhammad Ali and Mike Tyson. Some people might actually think that would be a one-sided fight. I'm talking about. I'm talking about Muhammad Ali in his prime. You know, Cleveland Williams fight, around about 66, 65, 66, and uh, Mike Tyson when he just won the title, when the hunger was there for the boxing and the love was there. Full of boxing when he was destroying Trevor Burbank and Tyrell Biggs and Pinklin Thomas and Tony Tubbs and Larry Holmes when he was demolishing them guys. Uh, still don't think he would have been Ali. Ali had a great chin, uh, had it all, great uh, technique, uh, hand speed, stamina, uh, decent punch or two. And tough, very tough. But May Tyson in his prime. It's a hard one to call. These are all hard to call. But it has to be Ali. Because I rate Muhammad Ali the greatest heavyweight that ever lived. Uh, this one's a good one. Joe Frazier against Rocky Marciano. A real slug fest there. Uh, Frazier was put down, uh, Bonavina put him down twice, Foreman put him down quite a few times, he was wobbled even by Joe Bugner, 
nearly went down. Uh, so he had a decent chin, but not a rock solid chin. Marciano went down against uh, Jersey Joe Walcott from a left hook. And boy, could Joe Fraser throw a left hook. He also went down against Archie Muir. Labour is only two knockdowns. Uh, has to be Marciano in a blood fist. Uh, a very grueling fight. Has to be Marciano. Marvin Hagler against Bernard Hopkins. Or even Roy Jones. Uh, I think Jones would be too slick for Hagler. I'm talking about a peak Roy Jones. Before the wheels come off. Has to be Roy Jones. Uh, although Hagler, one of my greatest fighters, favourite fighters, top five middleweight champions pound for pound. Uh, Hopkins very awkward very tricky very slick that would be a pick and fight I'm going to sit in the fence for that one but I think Jones will be Hagler Pernell Whittaker first Roberto Duran at Uh Roberto Duran, great Libya champion, 12 title defences, but the division was weak. There wasn't many great challengers. Uh, the Vera Wett brothers, who were slick, gave them a lot of trouble. Uh, yeah, movers, the likes of Sugar Ray Leonard in the, the second fight. Uh, people who were slick and quick. Saul, Saul Mambi, gave them all sorts of trouble. Uh, so there was nobody slicker than Pernell Whittaker. So I'm going to go for Pernell Whittaker. Do you unanimously appoint Roberto Duran at Labriot? Julio Cesar Chavez against Roberto Duran. Now, what a fight that would have been. The two of them were the student traded. And hard to call a winner. Once again, at Labriot. Uh, there's not many guys could have outfought Roberto Duran. There's not many guys who could have stood there toe to toe in a slugfest with Roberto Duran. So I'm going to go with Roberto Duran unanimously. Mickey Walker against Tommy Hitman Hearns at Welterweight. Now, two great fighters, uh, you know, both went up in weight, but Walker ended up. He was welterweight champion, he won the middleweight title, he lost a split decision against Tommy Lockham for the late heavyweight title. And he fought heavyweights, Maxi Burr, Max Schmeling, he drew with Jack Shark. <laughs> I mean heavyweights. So has to be Walker. Hearns went up too, but Hearns' chin was a wee bit suspect. Mickey Walker was as tough as old boots. Has to be Walker. Alexis Arguello against Azuma Nelson uh, at Super Featherweight uh, don't forget Arguello cleaned the division out he beat uh, Bazooka Lemon, Bobby Chacon Cornelius Bozelberge Ronaldo Neverate uh, he won the title against Alfredo Escalera uh, defended against Escalera wiped out the entire division uh, Mm. Nelson at Super Valley we had great wins over tough guys Gabriel Ruelas and James Jesse James Legra. They were great fighters. They were terrific fighters. I love to watch them box. So have to go for Arguello. Have to go for Arguello. Two great fighters, two all uh, Hall of Famers, but Arguello all the way. Tommy Hearns and Pernell Whittaker. See, Stales make fights and have to go for Hearns at Welterweight. I think at some point, I think at some point Hearns is going to catch him. But Pernell Whittaker is so slick, so majestic. Poetry in motion. It's not an easy pick, but it'll go for Tommy Hearns. You know, 
Wilfred Benitez was tricky too, but Hearns beat him. Uh, yep. So I have to go with Hearns. Hitman Hearns. Sugar Ray Robinson against Harry Greb. Well, in my opinion, Harry Greb is the greatest middleweight of all time. But also, Sugar Ray Robinson was the greatest fighter of all time, greatest boxer of all time. But at welterweight, uh, when he stepped up the middleweight, he started becoming a wee bit inconsistent. He won the title, he lost the title, he won the title, he lost the title. Uh, so, the Harry Greb from 1918-1919, before he became blind in his right eye, uh, I think would beat Sugar Ray Robinson, yeah. Yeah, he would just like punch him. But what a great fight. What a terrific fight. Dream fight. But all these are, as I say, a hypothesis. They're not going to happen, unfortunately. Carlos Mons on against Marvin Hagler. Uh, tricky one to pick. Mons on 14 defences of his title, wasn't it? Hagler 12. But the greater opposition was with Mons on. The, heavy, the middleweight division wasn't great when Hagler was champion, even though he wiped it out. His best wins were against late middleweights and welterweights. Even fat lightweights like Roberto Duran. Whereas Monzon beat the likes of Damon Griffith. Uh, ben Venute, uh, you know, guys like that. Benny Briscoe, he, he, he fought them all. He fought the best. The cream of the crop in the middleweight division was at its peak then, maybe. So it has to be Monzon to beat Hagler in points. Uh, Arguello against Julio Cesar Chavez at Super Fellerweight. Uh, mm. That's a hard pick. But at Fellerweight and Super Fellerweight, the likes of Juan Laporte and quite a few others took Chavez very close. Where Arguello wiped out the whole super featherweight division and there was some great super featherweights then so I'm going to go with Alexis Arguello and uh, the 15th and final round is Joe Lewis against Sonny Liston mm. uh, Joe Lewis have to go with Lewis what a puncher, what an incredible puncher. Uh, great technique, great job, wee bit slow of foot, but 25 tail defences over 12 years, quality. Okay, some people say bumble a month, but he beat the best of what was around. And uh, somebody listen, wow. I mean, it's no easy pick. Lewis could get put down. He was put down by, by, by guys, two-tone Tony Galento and quite a few others. Uh, he was down quite a few times. Sonny listen if he connected. So no easy pick there. And I don't want to sit in the fence, but you have to go with the quality of Julius. But what a fight, what a fight that would have been. Uh, yep. Uh, look, fire your fantasy fights uh, to me. On YouTube, uh, and I pick a winner. Uh, I just want to give this book a wee plug. Uh, this is a terrific book I read here, uh, Murder in Federal Street. It's about the story of Tyrone Everett. Anybody who likes boxing and true crime will love this book. It's a fantastic read. And uh, what a great fighter he was. He was 37 and 1, and the one he lost was. The robbery of the 1970s. One of the robberies of the century. In fact, I thought it was a fixed fight. And he was just about to have the rematch with Alfredo Escalera when his girlfriend shot him dead. But there's uh, new evidence in the book. A new suspect, very credible. New suspect mentioned in the book. It's an intriguing, fantastic read. So as I say, anybody who likes true crime 
or anybody who likes boxing or sport, buy this book. It's a fantastic book. And what a legend he would have been. Him, you know, him fighting uh, Arguello. Uh, oh, wow, what a fight that would have been. Uh, thanks very much for listening to me. And I'll see you all again soon. Take care. God bless.